Many pastors, seminarians, and believers who are attending Shincheonji Online Seminar, Testimony on the Parables of the Secrets of Heaven and Their True Meanings, it is nice to meet you. My name is Choi Il-hun, and I'll be your host today. I'd like to sincerely thank everyone who's attending Shincheonji Online Seminar, which is being broadcast to the whole world. Before we begin, we'll offer up a prayer with a united heart. Our Holy Father God, we truly thank you. We are grateful that you've created heaven and earth and allowed us to have this precious life. We are also grateful for your grace that you've freed us from sin by the blood of Jesus that was shed on the cross. We offer up all thanks and glory to you as you are giving us the clear testimony of your new covenant, the book of Revelation, which no one knew before. We are now hearing the testimony of Introductory Lesson 23 of the Testimony on the Parables of the Secrets of Their True Meanings. The entire world is filled with joy as they hear this testimony, and everyone is proclaiming, We are one, to hear more of your word. This is truly an amazing work of yours. Father God, please allow the ears to hear, eyes to see, and minds to perceive for the family of faith who are in attendance today. Please guide them to your blessings as they hear your word and keep it. We earnestly pray and wish that you be with each person who is hearing your word today so that this time can be a time full of perception and grace. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. This online seminar is being conducted with strict adherence to health regulations and social distancing guidelines. Today's title is The Three Kinds of Heaven and the Figurative Key. We'll have a time of understanding the three categories of heaven and perceive the true meaning of the figurative key through this precious time. The Bible says that there is a key of heaven and there is a key of hell. Whether these keys are physical and literal keys, or if there are true meanings hidden in parables, I hope everyone can confirm with certainty their true meaning through the Bible today. Now let us welcome up instructor Kim Chang-sik from Shincheonji Church of Jesus, Thomas Tribe. Please welcome him with a big round of applause. Pastors and believers worldwide who hope in heaven and eternal life, it is nice to meet you. I, out of the 12 tribe leaders of Shincheonji, learned this word from the Thomas tribe leader and mission center instructor Kim Chang-sik. And our tribe leader learned this word from the chairman of Shincheonji, Lee Man-hee. I sincerely welcome you to Shincheonji Online Seminar on the Testimony on the Parables of the Secrets of Heaven and Their True Meanings. Everyone, did you listen well regarding the three kinds of Israel last time? God in every generation chose the chosen people, and together with the chosen people, He worked. However, the chosen people who were selected broke their covenant with God. And at those times, God chose a new chosen people and continued on His work of the past 6,000 years. And I believe that we know through the Bible that today is the era of new spiritual Israel. Today, together with me, we are going to share the testimony on the parables of the secrets of heaven and their true meanings, introductory lesson number 23, regarding the three kinds of heaven and the figurative key. Pastors, there are some of us who may know this, and some of us who may not know this. However, I will testify to this once again today, so I would appreciate it if you will listen to it. We the believers, our hope is heaven and eternal life. 
However, in the Bible, there isn't only just one kind of heaven. Actually, there are three kinds of heaven. Then what are the three kinds of heaven? In the Bible, there's physical key and also spiritual key or the figurative key using the characteristics of physical key. What is the true meaning of this figurative key? Let's all find out in the Bible. Then let's first look at the true meaning of the parables. The true meaning of the three kinds of heaven. The first meaning is the kingdom of heaven in the spiritual world. The second meaning, so in the physical world, it is the tabernacle of heaven of the chosen people who were chosen first. Thirdly, after the betrayal of the tabernacle of the chosen people, there's a recreated heaven, that is, the sealed twelve tribes. The true meaning of the figurative key is the wisdom to know secrets. How did these true meanings of the parables come about? Let's find out through the Bible. Let's first examine the three kinds of heaven. Heaven, as you know very well, is referring to God's kingdom. The place where God's throne is found is heaven. If God's throne is in the spiritual world, then the spiritual world is heaven. If God's throne has come down to this earth, the physical world, then the place where it has come down to is heaven. Then, before Adam sinned, was there heaven in the spiritual world? Before Adam sinned, the Garden of Eden itself was heaven. Because Adam sinned, God left and he went to the spiritual world. Then from that point on, the spiritual world has become heaven, right? Everyone carries out a faith walk to go to heaven. Then where is heaven? If one does not know where heaven is, can one go there? And when God is on this earth, can we refer to the spiritual world, heaven? No. Because God's kingdom has left this world and it's in the spiritual world, we call that place heaven. Thus, if heaven has come down from the spiritual world to this earth, we can say heaven has come. That's why at the first coming, Jesus says the kingdom of heaven is near. Then the kingdom of heaven that has come was with Jesus. That's why Jesus was the reality of heaven. Additionally, the people of Israel were referred to as the sun and the moon and the stars. The place where the sun and the moon and the stars are found is also heaven, right? Therefore, we can know that God was also with men. Isn't that so? In contrast, though, if the devil was with this people, then that place is called hell. Then no matter what era it is, no matter what organization it is, if God in heaven is with them, they are connected to God. Then that place is heaven, isn't that right? Meaning, if God and God's throne come down to this earth, then the place where they have come down to is the kingdom of heaven, meaning, heaven in the physical world. Then let's see how God's kingdom heaven can be categorized into three kinds. Through the word, let's examine one by one. Let's perceive well the three kinds of heaven so that we can obtain our hope of heaven and eternal life.
In order to understand the three kinds of heaven, we must read the parable verse in Revelation chapter 21, verse 1 to 2 in one voice. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for a husband. Yes, you read well. Looking at Revelation chapter 21, verse 1 to 2, there is new heaven, new earth, first heaven, first earth, and also the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming from God and heaven. Isn't that so? Then, what is new heaven, new earth? What is first heaven, first earth? What is the holy city, New Jerusalem? Let's examine through the words inside of the Bible. First, let's learn about heaven. The first meaning of heaven was the kingdom of heaven in the spiritual world. Looking at Revelation chapter 4, and God's throne is displayed, the kingdom of heaven in the spiritual world. And at that place, we see God, the 24 elders, the seven spirits, the four living creatures, and many spirits, right? That's why that place is heaven. Also, in Revelation chapter 21, verse 10, the kingdom of heaven in the spiritual world is called the holy city, New Jerusalem. And it says in Revelation chapter 21, verse 14, that the holy city, New Jerusalem, is made up of the 12 disciples becoming the 12 foundations, the kingdom of heaven in the spiritual world. And Jesus, approximately 2,000 years ago from today, spoke about this holy city, New Jerusalem, the kingdom of heaven in the spiritual world, in John chapter 14, verse 3. It says that Jesus will go and prepare a place. And when this place is prepared, he will come back and be with us. Then, where is this place which Jesus prepares? Yes, you're right. It is the holy city, New Jerusalem. And when this holy city, New Jerusalem, is prepared, it says Jesus will come back, right? Then the holy city, New Jerusalem, the kingdom of heaven in the spiritual world, to whom does it come? If you look at New Testament, Matthew chapter 25, we can see that this kingdom descends on sheep-like believers. And in Revelation chapter 4, verse 8, it says that God is to come. Isn't that right? Like this, the kingdom of heaven in the spiritual world, that is the holy city, New Jerusalem, at the appointed time, it comes down to sheep-like believers on this earth. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven in the spiritual world that comes down is the first meaning of heaven. The second meaning of heaven is referring to the tabernacle of the chosen people in the physical world that was chosen first. It says in Revelation chapter 21 verse 1 that there is first heaven and first earth that pass away. And this first heaven and first earth is what we're examining right now. The tabernacle of the chosen people, they were chosen first. First heaven, out of the two kinds of heaven in the physical world, it is referring to the tabernacle of the chosen people whom God was one with, that is, the churches of tradition. It says first heaven and first earth pass away, right? What does it mean that it passed away? This heaven, that is, the churches of tradition, the pastors and the saints that belong to it, because they betray, they're judged, and they come to an end. That is what it is talking about. 
This is also explained in Matthew chapter 8, verse 12. Let's read this verse all together. But the subjects of the kingdom will be thrown outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Yes, you read very well. If you look at the verse that we read, it says, In God's kingdom, the subjects of the kingdom are there and they are kicked outside into the darkness. Who are the subjects of the kingdom that are mentioned here? The subjects of the kingdom are seen in Revelation chapter 13 and in Revelation chapter 6. They are judged for their betrayal and they belong to the Gentiles. They are the first heaven and the first earth. For the past 2,000 years ago, where Jesus is, is sown, the traditional churches and the church members. Then to organize once again, they were heaven. However, because they betrayed, God left. There, the tabernacle of heaven of the chosen people, they were chosen first, subjects of the kingdom, traditional churches, and the church members belonging to them. The third meaning of heaven is referring to the recreated heaven after the betrayal of the tabernacle of the chosen people, that is, the sealed twelve tribes. As we read in Revelation chapter 21, verse 1, what appears there is new heaven, new earth. This new heaven, new earth is the recreated heaven, that is, the sealed twelve tribes. So in this physical world, out of the two kinds of heaven, there is a recreated God's kingdom, that is heaven. Let's see what it says regarding this in Matthew chapter 8, verse 11. I say to you that many will come from the east and the west and will take their places at the feast with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. Yes, like the words that we just read, from the east and the west, they come and take their places in the kingdom of heaven and they're promised here. In Revelation chapter 7, they are written as the sealed 12 tribes of new spiritual Israel. Then who are those who belong to the 12 tribes of new spiritual Israel? They appear in Revelation chapter 14 verse 1 to verse 5, harvested and gathered as the first fruits. In Revelation chapter 14, they are gathered at Mount Zion as the first fruits of the 144,000. They are, in Revelation chapter 7, the sealed 12 tribes of new spiritual Israel. These 12 tribes is in Matthew chapter 6 verse 10 that Jesus spoke about this. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This heaven. Then, in Revelation chapter 14, the first fruits, 144,000, how do they appear? Let's find that out. Approximately 2,600 years ago from today, it was prophesied through Jeremiah and fulfilled. If you look at the words in Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 27, we can see that God prophesied through Jeremiah sowing of the two kinds of seeds. And according to this prophecy in Matthew chapter 13, verse 24 to 25, Jesus came at the first coming. So God came to Jesus at the first coming and fulfilled the prophecy of the sowing of the two kinds of seeds. And according to the promise in Revelation chapter 14, verse 14 to 16, from the field where the seed was sown, the ripened crops born of the seed that was sown, there is harvested wheat like believers. They are those who come from the east and the west and take their places in the kingdom of heaven. Spiritual Israel, just like physical Israel, broke their covenant. 
That's why God, He judges and ends spiritual Israel, that is, the traditional churches. And in Revelation chapter 7, He creates the 12 tribes of new spiritual Israel. They are those who are born of God's seed, come from the east and the west and harvested. They are sealed, created into the 12 tribes of God's new kingdom and new people. They are the reality of Matthew chapter 13, verse 24 to 30, and verses 38 to 39. There are those who appeared as flesh of these prophecies, born of God's seed, God's sons. The third meaning of heaven, the recreated heaven, that is the sealed twelve tribes, the reality is, or those who are receive atonement of their sin by Jesus' blood, born of God's seed, harvested and sealed, the saints of the twelve tribes. Loving pastors and congregation members, where would God dwell today? Would God be with the first heaven and the first earth that betray? Or would it be with the new cre newly created new heaven and new earth? He would desire to be with those that are created with the words of truth, meaning the sealed twelve tribes. Then, all of us must be reborn with these words of the kingdom of heaven so that we can enter into the promised heaven as the family of God. Now, moving on, let's examine the figurative key. This figurative key is referring to wisdom to know secrets. Let me give you the explanation regarding the true meaning of this parable. Let's read the parable verse, Revelation chapter 1, verse 18, all together. I am the living one. I was dead. And behold, I am alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death and Hades. Yes, you read well. In order to know the meaning of the figurative key, first, let's look at the characteristics of physical key. Key is a tool to open locks, right? With, the, with a key, we can unlock locks to see the hidden content inside. God's word, likewise, if you look at Revelation chapter 5, it says it, it is sealed with seven seals. Then, what is a figurative key that is needed to open God's word that is sealed like this? True, to know the true meaning, we have to know the, we have to learn about the figurative key in the Bible. There are two kinds of figurative key. First, it is the key of the kingdom of heaven. Secondly, it is the key of hell. So the key of heaven, it is the wisdom to know the secrets of heaven. It is written in Isaiah chapter 22, verse 22, that God will give the key of David to him. Then who is him that is referred to here? It was referring to Jesus. At the first coming, Jesus who receives the keys to the kingdom of heaven, he gave this key to his disciples. Let's read the story of Peter who receives the keys of the kingdom of heaven in Matthew chapter 16, verse 19. Let's read Matthew chapter 16, verse 19. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on the earth will be loosed in heaven. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 19, Jesus gives the keys of the kingdom of heaven to Peter and he says, Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. 
These keys of the kingdom of heaven, God had it. And the keys of the kingdom of heaven which God had, gave it to Jesus. And Jesus, who received the keys of the kingdom of heaven, he gave it to who? He gave it to Peter, one of the twelve disciples of Jesus. Doesn't it say so? Then, we have many pastors and congregation members gathered here. At the first coming, did Peter receive physical keys of the kingdom of heaven from Jesus at the first coming? He did not receive physical keys of the kingdom of heaven, right? Then, what is the reality of the figurative keys of the kingdom of heaven? And with what? Can we open the secrets of heaven? To know the answer, let's see what it says in John chapter 17, verse 8. For I gave them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. If you see John chapter 17, verse 8, God gave the words to who? God gave his word to Jesus. Then at the first coming, what kind of word did Jesus receive? It was the revealed word of the fulfillment of the Old Testament. And there are two kinds of revealed word which Jesus gives to his disciples. One of them is the words of the scroll in Ezekiel chapter 3. Another, it was in the hand of God, the words of revelation that is. Then at that time, what Jesus gave to the disciples was the words of the scroll of the Old Testament Ezekiel chapter 3. Afterwards, the words that Jesus gave to John was the words of prophecy that he had in record. The recorded words are prophecies and not reality. The reality, the fulfillment, is, Je is what Jesus received at the second coming and opened. And the one who received that word and testifies to it is the person who received the revealed word the revealed book of the New Testament. And this revealed book that he received and testifies to is the open book that the angel gives in Revelation chapter 10. Then to organize the keys of the kingdom of heaven is the wisdom to know the secrets of heaven that are sealed in parables. Then let me explain the work of the second coming in pictures. If you look at Revelation chapter 5, we can see that God has a book sealed with seven seals. And who does, to whom does God give the sealed book to? It is to Jesus. And because Jesus now has the wisdom to know the secrets of heaven, he receives this book. And in Revelation chapter 6 and chapter 8, he opened the secrets of heaven that were hidden in parables. And as we can see in Revelation chapter 10, Jesus through an angel gives this open book, meaning the revealed book of the New Testament, to new John on this earth, meaning to this one shepherd. Then, on this earth, the only person who has the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, meaning the keys of heaven, who is it? Yes, you're right. It is the promised shepherd, New John, this one person who received the revealed book of the New Testament, who knows and testifies to all secrets of heaven. Then if one is a believer who hopes in heaven and eternal life, then they must meet the promised shepherd, New John, who has the keys of the kingdom of heaven so that they can understand and perceive the secrets of heaven and enter heaven. Next, let's learn about keys of hell. The keys of hell, it is the wisdom to know Satan's secrets. We can see in Revelation chapter 1 verse 18 
that Jesus has the keys of death and Hades. And because he has this key, he's able to, from abyss, meaning the organization of Satan, like it says in Revelation chapter 17 and 18, he's able to call and bring out God's people. But this key in Revelation chapter 9 is given to this star that falls from the star sky this destroyer, then how is it that this destroyer has the keys to the shaft of the abyss? We can understand this by knowing the order of the fulfillment of God's prophecies in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. God's prophecies fulfill in the order of betrayal, destruction, and salvation. In order for the work of destruction to occur, then the destroyers must be brought in, isn't that so? Then in order to do that, the keys of death and Hades, meaning the keys to the shaft of the abyss, is given to one of the destroyers so that he can do the work of destruction. However, after this work of destruction is over, an angel comes with the keys to the abyss and with chains capture and lock up Satan the devil and from that point on is the era of God's reign then to organize this this key the key of hell abyss is the wisdom to know the secrets of Satan to be able to release Satan and to also lock up and capture Satan Let's organize what we looked at today to give you the true meaning of the parables once again. We examine the three kinds of heaven, right? In the three kinds of heaven, first, it is referring to the kingdom of heaven in the spiritual world. Secondly, it is referring to the heaven, the tabernacle of the chosen people who were chosen first. And thirdly, it is referring to after the betrayal of the tabernacle of the chosen people, there is a recreated heaven, that is the seal of 12 tribes. And also, we examine the true meaning of a figurative key. And this figurative key is, is what? The wisdom to know secrets. Today, the secrets of revelation which fulfilled on this earth can be known through the promised shepherd, the one who overcomes, who received the re a revelation from Jesus. And we must become believers belonging to the 12 tribes of the newly created heaven so that we can receive the keys of heaven and obtain our hope as believers. So we have now listened to the three kinds of heaven and the figurative key. Next time, we're going to look at introductory lesson number 24, the process of being born again and the faith of endurance. The instructor, the instructor who will be testifying to the word next time is more skilled than I am. He will testify in an easy, easy way and a fun way so that we can understand it. Please be in great ante anticipation for next time and participate. Let's make sure to master the 66 books of the Bible so that we can carry out a faith walk according to God's will. I hope that with the words that we listen to today, our hope in heaven grew stronger. And furthermore, I hope that we can become God's family members who live in God's kingdom. I'll shout a chant. We are one in God and Jesus. We are brothers and sisters. And when I shout this out, please shout it aloud together. We are one in God and Jesus. We are one. I'll pray. God, we thank you and we are truly grateful that you have allowed to us the secrets of heaven. We sincerely thank you.
God, you help us to perceive the secrets of heaven completely so that we can become your children who live with you forever. We pray this in the name of Jesus, who is full of love. Amen. Thank you for listening to the end. Thank you. What must be reborn in order for people to become God's children through God's seed, which is God's word? What grows from the growing process? What kind of faith is a faith of perseverance? Today is a time of harvest. Should God's children become harvested or remain in the field? I pray and wish that everyone who is hearing these words would overcome with their faith of perseverance and become God's children who inherit heaven and eternal life. I believe everyone's had a time of perception and grace through the precious word today. Just as the instructor mentioned, we'll meet again with God's Word with the title of Introductory Lesson 24, The Growing Process of Becoming Reborn and the Faith of Perseverance, which is our last introductory lesson. Please look forward to the next lesson and be with us to receive precious perception through it. If you have any questions about today's lesson, Shincheonji Church of Jesus, or the Revealed Word, don't hesitate to call the number on the screen. We'll conclude today's seminar with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as if also have forgiven our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This concludes Shincheonji Online Seminar. Testimony on the parables of the secrets of heaven and their true meanings. Thank you for being with us today.